Last week we started studying Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. We pick up now in chapter 2. Paul is establishing how he brought the testimony of God. The testimony of God refers to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, this is how I brought the gospel, the, the gospel of Jesus to you. When I came to you, verse 1, I did not come to you with great speech or of wisdom. Paul himself was a highly educated man. He could debate, he could discuss, he could argue, he could reason. But he intentionally chose not to do that. Why? In order to stay focused on the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. He says, I didn't use enticing words to get people to come to Jesus Christ. But I depended on the power of the Holy Spirit. In the demonstration of the power, that means healings, miracles, deliverances, uh, all the mighty things that the Holy Spirit would do. Now we may say, you know, times have changed. That was the old times. Well, the gospel hasn't changed. The Holy Spirit hasn't changed. And people haven't changed. And then he says, you know, this is because God works like this. I want you to know something. Verse 9. As it is written, he's quoting from Isaiah 64, verse 4. He says, as it is written, what I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered the heart of man. Such things has God prepared for those who love me. He says, look, you love him, this is what God does. You're the one, you're the best person who knows you. Your, your spirit knows you. In the same way, it is the Holy Spirit who knows everything about and he says, we have not received the spirit of the world. We have received the spirit who is from God. For what purpose? That we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. So Paul is saying, hey, look, there are these hidden things God has prepared for you and me. Wonderful things. But we need to know about it. How will we get to know about it? God has revealed them to us by his spirit. He has given to us his Holy Spirit that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. He says, look, this wisdom from God, these hidden mysteries, these things that the Holy Spirit reveals to us, these things we communicate with the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot communicate it with natural understanding, with natural words. Now on what basis did Paul call them carnal and call them immature, babies. On what basis? He says, because there is envy, strife, and divisions among you. And so he's saying that that immaturity, this carnality, is one of the reasons why there is all this division. And so what is the antidote? If you and I mature and choose not to be carnal, but be spiritual people, live off the spirit, he says, this thing will not happen. So now Paul is bringing attention to another important truth. He says, look, this is how God works. God in his kingdom, in his work, he uses one man to sow, another man to water, and another man to reap. So all of us, many of us, are serving God. We are working, we are building, we are, we are nurturing people, we are building God's building, wonderful. But please be careful. On the motives and the methods. That they shouldn't be carnal, they shouldn't be fleshly. The antidote to division in the local church, four things we'll reiterate. First, we need to be spiritual and mature instead of being carnal and, and immature. Second, we need to understand that we are all co workers with God. We're co workers. You know, each one has their assignment, some may plant, some may water, some may reap. Uh, Each one has grace given to them. God God has given assignment to them. But we are all co-workers. And it is God who gives the increase. That means God is the one who gets the honor for the fruit. Third, we choose to build with the right materials. With spirit-empowered, spirit-motivated materials. Not with fleshly, carnal materials uh, uh, of envy, strife, division, all that. No, because if we build by that, it's wood, hay, and straw. It'll just burn. It won't stand the test of God. So you choose to do that. You say, God, give me my motive right. I want to do it right. I'll do my work inspired by the Holy Spirit. Number four, 
understand that envy, strife, division, carnality defiles the temple, so keep it out. Keep the temple of God holy. That we all choose to keep God's temple holy. Lord, I want to keep this temple holy. I'm keeping envy out. I'm keeping strife out. I'm keeping division out because this is your temple. And if we all operate with that understanding, you know what? We will be your people of one heart and one mind.